My name is Shay White. I'm a husband, father, a student, and business owner. So I'm doing a live presentation today for my uh, practicum seminar class. Uh, it's overseeing the sports and exercise science program at Columbus State. So I'm gonna give you an introduction about myself. Um, why SES? Why did I choose SES? So actually I was a trainer at Title Boxing Club in Westerville. Um, I used to box when I was a younger kid. Uh, competition, won a fair a few times, won Best Boxer in Columbus. So I ended up landing this job at a Title Boxing Club. Immediately, I become a great trainer. It was natural, you have to wear a microphone, you're like performing for a group class setting. And um, I was a natural at it. Then, um, what happened next? So then I ended up uh, be becoming an assistant manager, uh, like one of the top sellers in the club. Like I was really good at selling memberships and stuff. Um, then the pandemic hit, March 17th, we closed down. Um, and that sparked something in me. Clients wanted to still train with me. I had kind of got into fitness and uh, I worked with this guy named Jason Katz at 11 Athletics who inspired me. He was an awesome trainer and he inspired me to get into the uh, healthy lifestyle and get into fitness. So uh, right around April 1st, I LLC OhioFit.club, which is my company. And um, I started training people out of my home garage. And it was crazy making that huge jump during the pandemic. And when I started lifting with my buddies and uh, training clients, I wanted to become knowledgeable. I was already in Columbus State taking some prereq classes and um, I wanted to become knowledgeable in sports and exercise. So uh, I had a teacher, what class was I doing? Uh, I was doing a class um, and the instructor was Antoinette Perkins. And uh, she ended up saying like, hey, so you want to become certified without taking the NASM route while still staying in school? And I'm like, correct. She was like, perfect. You can actually switch your major to sports and exercise science. And we have a certificate uh, program and I would be your advisor. I'm like, awesome, let's get started. So that's kind of how I got my introduction into um, SES. So what are you expecting to learn in the sports and exercise uh, program at Columbus State? So so far, I've taken the certification route to become a medical exercise specialist. So some of the classes I've taken have been um, advanced strength and resistance training, intro to strength and resistance training, intro to sports and exercise science, uh, fitness lifespan, kinesiology, exercise prescription, and exercise physiology. Um, to me, that's kind of like the the fruit and butter of exercise science um, I'm already running my own company so I've learned like how to deal with clients one-on-one -on -one and the sales aspect and uh, generating more income for the company uh, and so this is like the nitty-gritty this is kind of what gets into like like what I've what I've learned specifically knowledge in areas as such as physiology psychology and biomechanics and nutrition I'll be taking nutrition this upcoming summer, which is a huge portion of uh, your fitness, your healthy lifestyle. So um, I haven't really done that yet, but as far as like exercise prescription, exercise physiology, kinesiology, uh, those were some amazing classes. And that taught me things on how the body moves, um, the physiology of exercise and uh, formulas. Exercise fizz with Don was just formulas like VO2 max, uh, learning things as in uh, 220, which is the max heart rate for the human body, minus someone's age, and that's their max heart rate. So those are things that I've learned. Uh, advanced strength and resistance training pretty much broke down every workout, and it taught you things as in vol volume, uh, load volume, uh, frequency, uh, hypertrophy, max strength, how like how to measure someone, like where their one rep max, not where their one rep max should be, but technically like how do you train someone for that? So for instance, let me give you an example. So um, like for instance, when it comes to like load volume, right? So I break this, I break this down for my clients all the time. Um, because a lot of my friends like to argue that you should lift heavy weights if, if you wanna grow muscle, which can necessarily be true. Um, so, say I'm lifting 135 times 10 reps times five sets, and then 
Let's go super heavy. Let's go 205 times five reps times five sets. So this one, this one right here, this is gonna be your hypertrophy. This right here, this is gonna be more of like max strength and getting stronger. Um, and so let's go ahead and type in these equations and see what we get. So when we do 135 times 10 times five sets, that's 6,750. So we got 6,750. Now, let's do that same equation for uh, your max strength day. 205 times five times five. It's actually lower. So um, this is some stuff that I learned like, like I would have never, yes, I could have went on YouTube and found this stuff out, but this is like the science part and that's why I took the college route. I could have learned this stuff in NASM, um, but I definitely want to train college athletes and so you have to go through college to kind of uh, train. Like you can't even apply for the National Strength and Condition Association certification unless you have a bachelor's in sports and exercise science. But uh, back to this, this was some stuff, this is what I learned in like advanced strength and resistance training. Um, this was like certain safety protocols in the gym, certain workouts, uh, how to build exercise plans. Like as you see, hypertrophy, if you're trying to build muscle and sculpt the body, that's the way to go. Um, this is gonna help you develop max strength and help you get um, stronger if that's what your goal is. Um, now you both, um, a little note from Don and um, what I found out, like this is a note all the way back from, um, you can actually grow muscle with both. So if you're doing max, what you're gonna do is take a two to five minute rest period in between. If you're doing hypertrophy, you definitely wanna to wanna to stay between eight and 12 rep range and uh, rest for about a minute to a minute and 30 seconds. So I was just giving you an example of like what SES and some, some of the classes I did. Alrighty, so bear with me. I'm going over some of my notes. All right, so the first class, Intro to Strength and Resistance Training. Um, this was an introduction to the weight room for um, the individual user. Uh, we learned proper technique, programs, weight room safety, things of that nature. Um, I took, I had Zachary Scott for that class, I believe, and I think we just did personal, like, workouts. Like, I remember him trying to kill us with this two-mile lunge thing. He wanted us to lunge for two miles. You can try that at home if you would like. Uh, that was just like, that was some um, things that he had us doing that. Now, personal fitness concepts. Uh, I don't really remember what that class was over. I had Antoinette for that. Uh, let me see, I think I have one of the books right here. Was that fitness management or professional? Yeah, I don't remember what that one was. Um, one of my favorite though was the intro to or the advanced strength and resistance training hold on one second so this was the advanced strength and resistance training book um in the first chapter first yes yeah, structure and function of body systems this was nuts i believe the first one started with anatomy and um i knew nothing about anatomy so i was intimidated when i first opened this book um it's from the national strength and conditioning association so I was super nervous when I opened this book because I had anatomy. What I did was made a t-shirt pointing all, um, pointing to the muscles and I got overwhelmed and I thought I wouldn't be able to get through it. But it actually was amazing because now I'm in kinesiology, I'm wrapping up spring semester. And um, there was certain, like, there were certain peers in my classroom like where I wouldn't know the muscle and they're like, how? Like, and it was because I took Don, who is a great professor by the way. But yeah, I just, um, that class, like I was very intimidated. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Then we would go to the actual lab and get to do certain workouts. Um, that taught me form. It taught me dynamic warm ups. So for instance, let's touch on exercise. Like a lot of people, when you go to a gym, you'll see someone stretching, doing isometric or static stretches. Uh, you actually want to do a dynamic, um, warm up for the muscle group that you're gonna be performing on for that day. So if I'm doing upper, what I've learned from advanced and strength resistance training is, I'm gonna take a resistant band and I'm gonna do something like chest pulls. Uh, two sets of 20 of chest pulls, chest pull downs, 
um, some um, externally rotate to help my uh, shoulder warm up because I'm gonna be doing a lot of pressing motion. So, um, or if it's a lower extremity day, like for instance, legs, then I'm gonna to wanna to do uh, two sets of 20, something like uh, alternating lunges, touching the ground, uh, step ups, uh, air squats, to get those hip flexors warmed up for my lower extremity workout. So th those were some main things that I took from advanced and strength resistance training, which was uh, super intense. What I wanna talk about that I'm gonna dive in is exercise physiology. As I said, it was a crap ton of formulas. Um, this class was pretty cool though. We learned so much. So this is the stuff that gets into like uh, your bod pod, your body composition, uh, your strength, endurance, and flexibility test, and things as in like your VO2 max test and different tests you can run on clients to help them with, uh, with finding out what their VO2 is. So um, we had like five labs over the semester which kept, like covered so much information. We had vital signs, uh, aerobic capacity testing, we had strength endurance uh, testing, as well as body composition, and then, um, of course, we had our anaerobic testing as well. So, uh, the vital signs, that was more like blood pressure, things of that nature, uh, resting heart rate, heart rate reserve, things of that nature, and then we also had uh, our body composition. So, there was like the skin fold test. Now, what I mean by when I said there was a crap ton of uh, equations, like for instance, you might know a body composition test or a body fat test as in uh, there's normal scales you can buy and say that you're 200 pounds but you're 150 you're 150 uh, lean muscle mass and you're 50 pounds of, you have 50 pounds of fat and we want to know what your body fat percentage is now I like to explain to people like 200 pounds at 12 body percent or 12% body fat and 200 pounds at 18% body fat is a totally different uh, looking body. Like the one with 12% are gonna have visible muscles, visible abs. Um, and so like for instance, there's actual multiple ways to find um, your body fat percentage. So one being, the one that I like the most, um, and you can go right here in Worthington and find you a, a, and go to Fitbit or what is that gym called? Fitness 19, I believe. It's 30 bucks, they have the bod pod. You like get down into like some compressor pants and you wear a skull cap and you sit in and it measures your water density. Uh, that's probably the most accurate. There's also a handheld thing that we used in class. I can't think of the name of that device, but you hold that and it you type in your information, height, age, weight and then it gives you uh, your body fat. And then there's the skin fold test. Now, what I've learned with the skin fold test is Don said is the only way that that would be accurate if the person knew exactly how to measure and where to pinch. What I mean by that, we've done this in class with partners, it's super hard. Um, you can either do three points or you can do seven points. And there's an equation, uh, it's all by millimeters. So you measure, like you would measure here. I think there's one here. There's a thigh, there's a couple other areas, and uh, say that those millimeters come up to like 111, you would type in this equation, it's like 0 0.000, blah, 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 and then you would type in those millimeters, times it by something, and that would give you also a form, that would give you an answer of an estimated body fat percentage. Those are things we learned in XFIS. Now, XFIS was super cool because, um, I don't know what NASM and all of these other programs do. I just don't. I know for me, when I have uh, Josh Perry or uh, another high class uh, client come to me and they're talking about what they did at the OSU program, and it's pretty cool because I'm actually learning those things. I'm like, oh, this is why I'm able to work with college athletes or pro athletes. We learn how to do VO2 max tests uh, with the mask on hooked up to the computer why they're running on a treadmill. Like Bruce uh, treadmill protocol test, we did the step up test and things of this nature. What what have I learned from Exodus that I apply to my training personally? So um, the strength, like the second, one of our third labs was a strength, endurance and flexibility test. So this is testing, like this is like doing an assessment. So a couple of things taking it back to a different class um, if we go to advanced strength and resistance training, 
which that's telling you how to work with clients, personal training in uh, a strength and resistance program, like linear periodization or something. Say I have a client that comes to me, uh, that class taught me like the overhead assessment. So X is another thing you can do as an assessment for your client. Um, you can have them do a, a push-up test, a sit-up test, and a squat test. And so the push-up test is still failure. Uh, with women, they do the modified push-up on their knees. They do as many as they can. Say this client's with me for six months to a year. We revisit that at the end of their program to see if they've got stronger. Um, and that's a way to test if they're getting results or not. Then you have the squat test. The squat test is tested at one minute and then the sit-up test your hands are across your chest, and that's also um, that's also time for a minute. There's also this chart that shows you what percentile you're in, um, depending on your age group, where you should be. If it's excellent, superior, normal, poor, average, those things. So that's the type of stuff that I use from X Fizz going into training with my clients. Like I love to have my clients do a, a muscle strength and flexibility test to see what needs not what needs to be corrected, but I use that and I utilize that as a um, a tool to see if we're making progress. So those are some things I use uh, the body competition, which is pretty cool. It's just cool to have that knowledge and also run um, these tests. And that was all learned in exercise physiology. Alrighty, so next we're gonna talk about exercise prescription. Exercise prescription, highly uh, awesome class, highly needed class. This is prescribing the exercise due to what type of client or the client's needs um, analysis, assessment. So um, things we learned in ex, um, exercise prescription, like for instance, a par -Q. I never knew what a par -Q was. I just started using those. Those are things, it's a form that you have your clients fill out, asking them about certain heart conditions or if they need to go see their physician to get approved to work with a personal trainer, which is awesome. You don't want to start working with someone who has a health um, condition, you didn't have them do a PAR-Q, and now you can't really get to any goals because of that health condition. So PAR-Qs are definitely um, needed. Here we have practicum seminar, which is this class, um, is where you get your credit hours at. This is where you actually go into the field and um, you're going to be doing, you're getting a feel for what you're gonna be doing. So in this program, um, sports and exercise science, you could be a masseuse therapist, a massage therapist, or you could be a personal trainer, they train you to do that, or you can work in physical therapy, which is also cool. That's why we take classes like kinesiology. Um, and so this class, it was so cool because since I ran my own program, Don, I remember one of my professors telling me like, yeah, man, if you're already working with clients and stuff, they should let you write off your own hours. Um, Cause I'm doing work part-time and then I'm in school full-time. Um, so the days that I don't have school, I'm usually training all day. And this was perfect. I get way more than 150 credit hours in nine weeks. Uh, I usually work uh, just to give you like, like on Mondays, I don't have class. So Monday at nine, I have a client. Monday at 10, I have a client. Monday at 11, 12, I have a client. And I'm usually off at one. I come home for about two hours, get some lunch, let my dog out. And then I'm back at work from four, five, six, seven, and then I'm off. So at first it was not like that. It started off pretty slow, but word of mouth has definitely been awesome because I do strength and resistance training. And then I also have the boxing background. So people love the self-defense thing. Um, so things that I've like came across um, in the fitness industry. At first I would charge, uh, let's talk about sales and the numbers game. At first I would sell packages and let clients keep their, uh, their sessions on a, uh, like just, like so say I sold you a package for 480, $500 for 12 sessions a month. So one hour, that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or however you wanna do it. Um, there's 12 sessions per month. At first, because I was money hungry, I would sell those packages and they would roll over, which made me not get paid. So um, this is like totally different. This would be more of like your, your fitness management ordeal. Let me grab this book and show you. Um, this would be more of your fitness management. These are things I didn't know. So if you're thinking about running a business or being a personal trainer, these are just certain mistakes I made. Like you don't sell by 
the month like that. It has to be something that uh, does not roll over. Um, getting into contracts, waivers, um, liability, what else were, were there, refund. There's just so much as the business with me being a business owner that I've learned outside of, uh, it wasn't outside of school. School definitely touches on that. It was just a mistake. It was diving in because remember, I'm doing school while running a business. So these are all things I learned. Um, but other than that, college, the um, sports and exercise science program has definitely made me more comfortable in what I do. I remember I used to be so nervous when a client, when I was meeting a client for the first time. And since I've been doing it for so long and we're creatures of habit, um, it just became normal. I meet a client, I give them a par cue, I have them fill it out, make sure they don't have any medical conditions, and then um, I have them do an overhead squat analysis, um, or I have them do an overhead squat for the assessment just to um, figure out what their needs gonna be. And so if I see, um, if I see um, their arms are leaning forward, that means they have tight lats, or if they're, uh, if they can't get super deep, that could be a tight gastrocnemius. So what I'll do is put two plates under the heel of their uh, foot, put their ankle in plantar flexion, and if their back stays straight, then it was definitely tight caps, or it could be hip flexors. There's a number of things. And this is stuff, just that whole sentence right there, I wouldn't have learned without being in school for sports and exercise. So um, I definitely took what I learned and applied it into my business. And I am super passionate about it. There's people like Zach, Don, um, Girl Don, Man Don, Antoinette Perkins, who's a doctor. Like these are, they're all teachers. So it kind of makes me wonder like, why did they not train people? Maybe they do. Um, my dream personally is to work with kids and pro and college athletes and develop them in Lewis Center. So I went to all the Tangy, so like I just want to give back to the community. I have three kids two boys who I'm watching grow and I help coach with them as much as possible, but it's different. It's a conflict of interest when it's your own kids, um, trying to force them into a field that you like. So, I mean, it's interesting being in this field. Am I going to end up teaching it? Am I going to end up running my own gym or will it just be a number of things because there's supplements, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So let's dive into our, uh, our next class. All right, so now we get into kinesiology, one of my all-time favorites. Um, this one changed everything for me in sports and exercise science. You can hear it in my voice how excited I got, and the blazer came off, so it's a little toasty in here. Um, kinesiology is a study of body movement. This one was super awesome. Um, I started following kinesiologists. Kinesiologists, uh, they have a unique way um, almost of working with clients as far as weight, um, weight training. Like I see, I follow this one doctor, Dr. Joel. He works with a couple of, uh, he works with Chris Carson, who is the uh, running back for the Seahawks, uh, Taylor Hinkle or something like that, the quarterback for Washington Redskins. Um, he's based in Atlanta, Georgia, and he does a lot of like, not necessarily, there are some explosive movements, but it's not your traditional uh, strength and resistance training. It's not your bench press, deadlift, um, overhead press, uh, dumbbell work as far as like goblet squats, curls, lateral raises, things of that nature. It's more so of a uh, lot of contraction talk, like so pretty much like 90 degree um, eccentric squat holds. So he'll have a client just sit there with the, um, it's a goblet squat, but they're holding an eccentric contraction squat, things of that nature, which also, so it's kind of like a static isometric, um, Movement, which also builds muscle, is surprising. And this is why like, I love this class because it taught me like, man, the science of it. There's so many ways to build muscle and get stronger. Um, so a couple of things like it's just, it's pretty much getting into like, like it was nuts to take this class without anatomy. Let's just say that much. Like it was super nuts to take this class without anatomy. Um, but like I said, advanced strength and resistance training with the first chapter touching on the basis of it, like bicep, brachial, brachial, uh, brachial radialis, uh, your tricep, brachii, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, gastrocnemius, soleus, tibia, things of that nature. It definitely got me used to the terms. And when I first started this class, I think the whole class, Don was like, don't get overwhelmed. 
we all were overwhelmed when we first started kinesiology and he was like, as it goes on, um, it will become easier. Now I still have some trouble with it. Um, if you guys have any ideas or Zach or Don, girl Don, boy Don, if any of you have any suggestions on how to get super comfortable, because the goal is to be like Don. Don's amazing at this stuff. He just knows it like the back of his head. Um, and they have to be painting fairly well for him not to be training pro athletes. As much knowledge as this man knows. But that's my goal. That's my dream. Um, like, for instance, like, uh, so he'll ask questions. Like, one of the main things or some of the things we learned is like, what at the knee joint what lets the leg or extend or something in that and that's going to be like your quadriceps which is like vastus lateralis vastus medialis medi vastus medialis um what else said lateralis vastus intermedius and then uh your rectus femoris which is the four muscles that make up the quadriceps but that lets the knee that extends the leg at the knee joint um what what flexes the leg at the knee joint? That's gonna be your hamstrings. What's the four hamstring muscles? That's gonna be your semitendinosus, semimembranosus, biceps femoris. Um, what, um, then you have like your gastrocnemius, which is your calf. Uh, the ankle has three motions it does, or three actions, which are gonna be dorsiflexion, when the ankle is pointing up towards you, uh, plantar flexion, when you, Put your ankle down towards the ground and then neutral which is what most of us we did atomical analysis over throwing and wind up that like this class was so interesting uh one area i lack though on the kinesiology portion is the upper ab that one's hard especially getting into like the uh the fingers and the toes like it's very in-depth and it's a lot of information to take in in 16 weeks but it definitely, it helped with so much. Like uh, like what exercises will allow the shoulder to extend, or not extend, but like for instance, like bicep, like uh, what allows the elbow joint or at the elbow joint, what flexes, the muscle that flexes is gonna be your bicep, um, brachii, and then what lets it extend is tricep. And yeah, it's almost like it's common sense, but, um, but it's still cool to know like the science behind why the elbow extends. That's your tricep. Another a great one um, like that changed the game was lateral raise. The two muscles in the shoulder uh, or a couple of them were infraspinatus and supraspinatus. So depending on everyone who does a lateral raise, they all go neutral. So this is neutral holding your hand like this. Um, if you do pronated or supinated, so supinated, we learned like we would have to feel um, and figure out what muscles are being worked when you neutral, if you're pronated or you're uh, supinated. So pronated definitely helps rehab like those shoulders. And so we had to do, right now we're doing, um, it's finals week, so we're doing a huge kinesiology portfolio where you work with the client and uh, you collect information on the lower extremities upper extremities and uh, lower extremities, upper extremities, and uh, the lumbar, thoracic, and cervical region of the spine. And then you pretty much correct those imbalances. What exercises would you use to correct those imbalances? And that's the project. And it, it's been amazing because I knew, I didn't know any of these things when I was taking algebra and uh, English almost a year and a half ago. So kinesiology was definitely one of my uh, favorite classes.